Awesome, welcome back. This is the last video in our video series about what happens when I type www.google.com into my browser's URL bar. And basically what I want to do here is just quickly recap. You know, in the last video we talked about the TLS handshake and after the TLS handshake ends, then what I'm going to do is send data to the Google server. In the form of an HTTP request and that HTTP data is going to be encrypted via TLS and Google's going to send back an HTTP response. There's lots of interesting stuff going on with the format of HTTP. HTTP2 has been out for a while and HTTP3, which is really kind of competing in a lot of its responsibilities with TCP, um, it might change the way networking works. There's a lot of interesting stuff there going on in the format, but I mean, basically we make an HTTP request that follows whichever version of HTTP we're following, HTTP1 or HTTP2. We send it. We receive a response. That response is going to contain HTML serving us Google's home page, and that might require us to make a few subsequent response uh, or requests like, hey, there's some JavaScript and CSS files that I need. I'll make HTTP requests for those as well, and Google will send those back. And so just want to say all to facilitate this simple transaction of data, hey, give me some HTML. Here's some HTML. We had to do so much stuff. You know, the internet is so incredible, the physical infrastructure and the protocols, all of this, you know, we actually had, we just have like a little straight lines here. We know that actually what happens when I type on my computer, I actually send a request to my router and my router sends a request to my modem and my modem sends a request across to a telephone wire. And that telephone wire connects to some like Comcast infrastructure. And that Comcast infrastructure is a huge series of many different routers and switches that are all interconnected. And we had to have protocols like BGP and RIP to mediate the communication, you know, in between the nodes on Comcast's infrastructure as well as mediating, you know, the difference between Comcast's infrastructure and Verizon's infrastructure. These two things need to be able to communicate and they have to be able to communicate with Google's infrastructure. So not only did all of this physical infrastructure have to be built, but we had to use networking protocols like BGP and RIP in order to communicate amongst these nodes ultimately getting us to Google's server. So our data had to figure out how to get back and forth using the IP protocol. But not only that, we had to develop mechanisms at the link layer, you know, like Wi-Fi is using radio waves to blast information to this modem. And then this modem might be using like a fiber optic cable or a copper cable to blast information here. Okay, so we had to do all of that. And we also know I didn't actually get to talk directly to the Google server. First, I had to talk to a different server. Let's put it over here. I had to talk to a DNS resolver. And that DNS resolver also had to use all this infrastructure to talk to potentially other DNS servers, an authoritative DNS server at minimum, but you know, a, a DNS root server possibly, and a TLD server as well. So I had to resolve the DNS query before I could even send the query to this IP address over here, which I didn't know at the beginning of this process. And even once I had that data, I didn't just get to send an HTTP request and receive an HTTP response. I had to first negotiate the TCP handshake and then I had to negotiate the TLS handshake. And after I negotiated the TLS handshake, I could finally encrypt my data and receive it across the wire. So, you know, next time a recruiter or technical interviewer asks you, hey, what happens when I type www.google.com into my browser to URL bar? I hope that you're a little more prepared to give a thorough answer. And I also hope that you're excited to learn more about networking. You know, this series is going to end up having been like an hour worth of video, but you can take 
multiple semesters worth of classes about the inner workings and the details of HTTP and what's the difference in HTTP2 and what's coming out in HTTP3. And, you know, BGP4 is like one of the most incredible pieces of software that exists. It's a massive protocol. It mediates all of our internet connection, you know, and, and you can study it alone for, you know, a couple of years and still not be the deepest master of BGP that exists in the world. So there's so much more to dive into, even if, you know, this video series dived more in than maybe you've seen in the past. There's so much more to learn. And networking is an incredibly exciting field with lots and lots changing. You know, maybe you've heard about 5G, and that's a difference at link layer protocols and hardware layer changes that can be made. But there's also a lot going on with video compression and how to properly stream video and how to ensure, like TCP tries to do, how do we maximize the use of bandwidth? And it's constantly evolving. So. I hope that even though this is the end of our video series, it's not necessarily the end of your journey into networking. So thanks for watching. See you next time.